Hello and welcome. How First are you both? both? I'm doing well. <laughs> Wonderful. It's so good to be with both of you. I'm Sai, and uh, we are definitely, we have a great opportunity to catch up with Angela and Alan before the May 13th event. And specifically this conversation, uh, and of course the May 13th event with the Women Business Collaborative, Andy Simon, and of course Catalyzing the Future. But very specifically for this conversation, you both have had an opportunity to look at all the catalytic conversations and we're gonna mm -hmm. explore those together. So- Fantastic. Wonderful. So I would love for, for you both to introduce yourselves and we'll, we'll kind of dive in. Angela, we would love to, to have you go first. Absolutely. Hello, I'm Angela Simonisi. I'm currently a senior director in the R&D organization for a healthcare software company. I've been with this company six years. I've been in a managerial leader position for probably close to 23 or so years. Uh, and I love being in a uh, managerial leadership role. Uh, personally, I have almost uh, a daughter who's almost 11. I am married and I am in the beautiful Southern California. <laughs> Excellent. Hey. Alan, all yours, my good friend, yeah? So, name is Alan Camus. Uh, interestingly enough, I work at the same healthcare technology company as Angela. And there I am, uh, Vice President of Operational Excellence, which is in the R&D uh, division. Uh, I think I'm approaching seven years uh, now, this, this company. And um, I, I find, you know, I really, uh, from a leadership perspective, I, I kind of enjoy things that, that uh, other people find inspiring. I like to kind of give off my, my energy and what excites me and, and finding a way for that to excite other people. And, and that makes work a little less boring uh, for me. If, if what I'm doing not only matters to me, uh, but matters to the people I'm working with. Wonderful. It's so good to be with both of you all around and, and kind of, you know, without, without holding back, we'll dive right in and, and maybe, you know, Angela, perhaps you can start us off and kind of what themes grabbed you and sort of what did you experience as you looked at some of these, uh, conversations. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. It was so refreshing to watch these uh, videos of various women and men in different leadership roles, different backgrounds, experiences. It's interesting, though, to pick up some key words that were used uh, multiple times throughout the uh, presentations, uh, words that caught my attention, such as culture, how culture is really important to success of an individual and as an organization, it has to be fostered. It has to be um, paid attention to. It is something to, to, to be taken for granted. Um, trust was another thing that came up multiple times, whether I have to trust my organization or um, trust those around me and also to instill trust as a leader. Uh, two other words that really hit to me, which were words that I live by are being authentic and accountable. Uh, being authentic in myself, uh, you get to have uh, the real me when you ask me questions. I like to be authentic and, and try not to hold back. And then accountable. Uh, I hold myself very accountable and I have a very high expectations to hold those around me accountable, whether that's to do a job, to hit a date, but also in the light of trust and accountability is uh, I'm sorry, about culture, like being accountable to our culture and to the organization. So it's it's one thing to be accountable for delivering, you know, a widget or meeting a date or whatnot, but it's also that accountability to each other to establish trust and to build a, a healthy culture. So some of the, the things that I picked up on through my my observations. Excellent. Shane, I what was interesting, and, and Angela, you kind of mentioned that the different, the, the kind of the, the large array of, of, of people and the different catalyzing conversations. I think about one one person who, it's funny, the exchange with society, you kind of touched on um, imposter theory and, you know, and imposter syndrome, right? People have that. And, and, and I, you know, I find myself, you know, in my career, I've worked for some people who uh, inspired me and I respected and some people not so much. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes you know I, I think about you know is it, is it me is it me is it them <laughs> you know what is it and and you, you know you only know the people you know so all these other people that you hear about you read about 
you, you never quite know what you know what what is their story and and how much is real uh, about you might what you might hear and I found um, these conversations were great it was it was a great look into an incredibly broad spectrum of people um, mm -hmm. all uh, successful in their own right um, right. all people who who seem like people I would absolutely kind of respect and enjoy working with. And, and it was interesting that th there was such a common thread um, among them all to all d totally different stories, totally right. different experiences, yet mm -hmm. every one of them spoke about um, the, the, these common values and, and trust and uh, mm -hmm. accountability and these other things, which um, are those same values and attributes that, you know, when I think about the people that I've uh, been inspired by and respected, uh, you know, over the years, and those values that were lacking. <laughs> Maybe, Absolutely, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> so, so that was, was it's fine. I find that it's kind of interesting, refreshing, you know, to to hear that you know from all these different people uh, speaking in in a similar light. You know, it's interesting you mentioned the the things that are missing in in those leaders or whatnot. It I have learned a lot about. I think I'm a good leader about being a good leader from the leaders who I found weren't so good. Right. You mm -hmm. watch them like, I'm not going to do that. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do that differently. So it's interesting. You mentioned that because the, the videos are all phenomenal leaders and you can tell they're all very successful and I am a, a, a like many of them. Right. So I share a lot of their characteristics. So I can't find things like, well, I wouldn't do that. But I have learned a lot of lessons in how to strive to be better in watching those around me to don't do that. <laughs> so you you touched on that. That's kind of interesting because it's a it's a way of looking at things differently. Of course, I want to emulate and replicate um, those that are successful around me and do what they do. But those who didn't do it well, those almost stood out a little bit more to some extent as like a, a solid ground of not replicating that. Absolutely. I, there, there was one person who was interested. It, it really stood out to me where she was speaking about a negative experience she, she had had um and and how her her first uh response right and you know kind of within herself was that why it was happening or what she was doing and and she quickly was able to reframe it to understand that's just not a nice nice person <laughs> that, that, that's just you know that person's a bully they're just not a, a good person and and it had nothing to do with her it's it's that person would be that way to anybody. And mm -hmm. I think it's, um, we oftentimes don't allow ourselves to think that way, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're quick to what did I do or or why or what have you instead of, yeah, to your point, it's just not the, the behavior that, that I that I like. And, and hopefully uh, you're you're able to catch these things to, to your point, to, to not do them yourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. And because, you know, I was thinking about it's funny, one of the things you had said, Angela, in, in your conversation that I was thinking about a bit, I was, I was writing these notes, is that as a leader, you're always being watched. Right. Mm -hmm. And and I thought about that. And then I kind of started writing, you know, kind of after that and said, you know, it's being watched. And, and at some level, you're probably being emulated. And so whether good or bad and you're right. in that role and, it, and if you're exhibiting poor behavior, well, then there's probably someone down the line who them themselves, um, because they're seeing that, well, you have a title, you have a position, whatever. So it, it, yeah. it must work. That must be the way you're supposed to do it versus, um, you know, exhibiting positive um, behaviors. And then, you know, people will subconsciously or whatnot, maybe follow those behaviors. And Absolutely. And I'm going to, I'm going to uh, like unravel that just a little bit. And I think, it's even more so when it's a male, female. I think men are based on title, uh, can get away with that more that either the poor behavior or uh, assertive but almost aggressive behavior. And so you're right, the, those that are around them are seeing this behavior and like, well, goodness, that is a strong male that I need to follow and replicate. Mm -hmm. Now, when I have done very strong behavior, I can become a crop cross as the B word, right? Or my goodness, she is so aggressive. She's so dominating. But if, if it, was, uh, it was a male, it's like, well, that obviously he got to that role, that title because of that behavior. It's very interesting. So you, I 
I'm, I'm very mindful of when I become um, my more assertive me <laughs> when I need to, because I want to make sure it still comes across professional and not disrespectful and not to um, alienate anybody, but to show that there are times when we have to be assertive and we have to take take lead and charge and so forth. But when um, it's done poorly and it's with aggression or you know hands on the table and people see that, then that just keeps replicating and it just keeps it keeps growing. But if you do it in a positive, constructive way, you use the right words, you try to be respectful, but still be firm and hard. I think it, it just sets the different type of tone. Like you're, you're so right, Ellen. I, I've been in many a meetings, a prior company where I think every single meeting I was in, there was one gentleman that, I mean, literally pounded the table almost every meeting. I was at that job for four months. I'm like, this is not a company that I need to be in. I just, I want to have the healthy debates and I want to disagree and I want to uh, lead forward, but I am not going to be in a meeting where you're pounding on the table every every meeting. Not going to happen. So it's it's you. You're right on. I, I call out the differences though, because I I personally have seen where for me personally, as well as when working with men, that it's more acceptable for a man to do that at times than it is safe for me. Yeah, it's it's interesting that you brought that up, Angela. Because one of the things I was thinking about uh, earlier today was a, a job I I had where there was a significant restructuring took place. And, and so this new leader uh, came in and I hadn't really thought about it until you just made that comment, uh, <laughs> how he would pound on the table. Um, <laughs> and, and he brought in a number of, of his now, you know, lieutenants and they would all pound on the table. And, and I hadn't actually thought about it till, till earlier today, but that, off the top of my head, whatever, he brought in four people, you know, two were women, uh, two were men. They all behaved the same way, but it absolutely was perceived differently. Right. Um, now, it, now, to me, I'd say it wasn't because it was universally perceived as me. I don't like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, I don't care who, what, I'm not making this speech for any of you. <laughs> this, this is not really behavior I want to be part of and uh, you know, end up departing the company. But it was, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting it, it, how, you know, what is that, that saying? I, you know, I've heard it in years, but uh, nice guys finish last. Is, am, am I saying that right or whatever? And oh. It's it's interesting when you when you think about it, and part of what I enjoyed about some of these speakers is is so much accomplishment, so much positivity. Yes, I don't think I've experienced that in my career at an even level. Uh, that there seems to be more people I don't want to be like <laughs> who've made it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe that just happens to be where I've worked. And the you know and kind of the luck of the draw, but uh, that, that's at least my experience. Fewer mm -hmm. people uh, mm -hmm. at the top that that I'm like, wow, that's they got it going on. Versus, you know, how did they get there? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I I uh, agree with you. Yep, <laughs> it's been similar my my background as well. Absolutely, and I think some of the industries are different geared differently i my began my career in financial services and it was uh i guess more female dominated i think at that time so i i say i grew up professionally in more of that type of environment so growing from that organization and seeing very successful leaders in the women women leaders uh, it was just like that's of course that's what i am and and my dad was a business owner so he had owned his own company and he was in the navy as a young man and so forth so i was influenced very heavily by a, a very authoritative father figure and i knew that i had to um go to school and become a, a leader and hopefully one day a business owner because that's what my dad did and then being in this my early careers of seeing these women uh, leadership positions really helped like yeah it's possible and then when i changed jobs I'm like oh wait it's not it's not the same in this industry this industry is not quite what's mm -hmm. going on and i so naive right thinking it's all like this and it's not so we have to we have to work harder so the great thing about this event having these conversations is highlighting these opportunities and to build this this culture that we've heard about now and to carry this positivity and optimism forward so alan and i taking it back to our organization and 
having this positivity and encouragement and this trust uh, grows what we need to keep doing because it is not it is not the same everywhere and it's it seems to be somewhat different in each type of industry but it is uh, definitely a theme that we heard in all these presentations that it, it definitely still exists and we need to be cognizant of it and aware and actively making a change and, you know it's it's interesting what you what you just saying angela because it 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 kind of made me think about this thing that i haven't thought about for a few weeks now at least um when when Sai, you know made me aware of of this uh conference should i call it right coming up this week women's leadership and i wanted to pass along this information and i thought about a couple of the women i work with and and I, and i thought about you know do i want to share this link as you know something you might be interested with and the reason i had this hesitation is i believed at least i have never thought about them as women leaders they're just mm -hmm. leaders i work with they're just mm -hmm. people that i think highly of and I, and I and I was a little concerned if I did that, would I in fact be doing exactly what I shouldn't be doing? I would now be, by promoting this, would I now be calling out that there are women in the workplace as opposed to they're just people I work with? Um, and so I I did I, I did hesitate for, for a little bit. And I, I thought about that for a little while. It might've been a day or whatever. And I ended up saying, you know what? It is what it is, whatever. I, th I think they would really enjoy this, benefit from it, I'm, I'm gonna share it. And, and so I did, I shared it with uh, a number of folks and um, and they, they were all very appreciative. I was, I was kind of surprised by the response. And I guess, I don't know, I don't know what to, to, to really do with that. It, it, how is that different than some conference in whatever that you just happen to share with somebody and they're like, hey, thanks for letting me know. I, you know, I'm really interested in that topic. Um, or not, and it, it's, uh, I think part of this whole world of trying to know what what's okay, what's not okay, what, you know, what are mm -hmm. your experiences mm -hmm. versus other people's experiences, but I, but I didn't expect to, to have that emotion to what, mm -hmm. really something incredibly simple. <laughs> Right. You, you're, you're so right. Yeah. It's so interesting that you say that because that's exactly how I feel often. Like there's a women in technology group. Uh, there's a, a, a two or three outside of we have an ERG here, the organization. But outside of my company, there are professional women in technology groups that I am uh, lightly engaged in. And I joined them. Oh, gosh, it was probably eight years ago or so. And I thought, well, my goodness, why is there a woman in technology group? Why isn't just a people in technology group? Well, because there aren't many women in technology. So we have to have a group. So it was interesting. And so when this uh, came out, it hits me for just a second. Like, well, why do we need this women group? Because it's a, it is a problem. It is something that exists that we can't just ignore. And so Alan, your comment is, is so thoughtful and I, I am like so appreciative that you you hesitated for a moment. I mean, it just it shows compassion that you recognize that shoot, this we should just be people <laughs> in leadership. We're just people working together. And so it's it's so nice to hear from a man to say that because I feel at times that I think it gets a little dismissed. Like, why do you need your own group or why should we focus on this? Because it actually is a problem. And there's research, there's Forbes studies, there's these things out there that actually highlight that if we don't have more women in leadership roles and see levers and on boards, we're not as successful, but we just, we just accept it. So to have this kind of conference, uh, it just highlights again that we have to focus. So for you to say that you thought about it for a split second, oh my gosh, I just almost like, huh. I see so proud and excited. It's like, oh, you get it, you care. <laughs> so yeah. thank you for that <laughs> because I don't, I don't hear that very often. I, I hear, I, because I, I think about the same way that when, when I see those, it's like, oh gosh, do we really need to have, we do, absolutely we do. And I am happy to be part of it and I am all for it. and fully supportive, but to hear that from you, it just, I don't know, I, I appreciate it. Oh, well, you're welcome. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, you know, I think I struggle with this topic. I mean, honestly, on a regular basis, yes. because 
as this as this and many other topics become important topics, it's I think about kind of you know the you know the, the team that, that that I'm responsible for, and is there a problem? Is there not a problem? How do you, you know? How do you really know? I, I think uh, right. you know uh, the majority right now of of my directs are women, but, but mm-hmm. that's not by design, um, and it's not. Right. Not by design. It's you know. Right. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it, I don't. I wouldn't say it's. It's not coincidental. It is. It is. They're highly competent people who who right. should have the job they have, and That's right. and it, so it's it's hard for me to. And this is let me kind of bring it back to some of the the comments of the the many of these people who spoke made about just doing the right thing, finding mm-hmm. the best person for for the job. And and it, I find it very. It's it's hard for me to understand somebody having their job and not hiring the best person for the job. Mm-hmm. That exactly. what is going through their mind to actively want someone lesser to work for them because right. of whatever box that that person's in. I. That's right. I. I, you know, I, but I to- to, to pull on that just a second too, um, it is a, a, a study has been done where women won't apply for a job unless they check every mark on the res- or the job description where a man is like, I can do two of those things, I'm going to apply. So I think at times there are more male applicants for things just because of the women have this self doubt. And so there's more of those applicants that come through and then we, uh, I think one of the speakers mentioned it as well, the guilt that we as women, that's like our natural tendency to feel guilty about it. Well, I, there's 10 there's ten requirements for this job. I can do five. Oh, should I apply or not apply? Well, if I apply and I can't do all of them, I'm going to feel guilty <laughs> about it. And it's so interesting. It's like you said, hiring the best person for the job. And I think that's absolutely you know what we strive for as leaders in hiring uh, people. But I think the... Uh, the best person from the job sometimes as a woman holds herself back because they don't check all 10 of those job description yeah. tasks. That's interesting. Yeah. And that's, and I, I'm familiar with what, you know, the study you're talking about it, something we saw recently. And I, and I, what I find so interesting about that is it absolutely defines me. I mean, if I look at that list without a doubt, I'd be like, oh, well, no, they, they want this, and and Cy knows it because I've spoken to Cy you know, about this at other levels, and you know, and wow, that's you know, look at those ten things, and and at the same time, people, you know, recruiters or, or have you will say things like, well, we don't, we don't ever expect that we're going to get all of that. <laughs> it's just some exactly, idea. and 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 so it, it is weird, and it speaks to almost this this larger problem of authenticity and and you know why do you why are you even posting for you know why are you creating a job description if it's not even what you think you can get or what you really need why did you create it to be something different that now very possibly isn't going to get you the right candidate because you didn't even properly describe what it is you want exactly which ties now into the culture and the trust of the organization that they are in, right? So now they, this company has like almost fostered this poor culture by asking for things they don't really need. It's like, right. my goodness, right? It starts with the onboarding process. Isn't it crazy? Absolutely. It, well, it, and it's, it, it's so interesting that it, it begs the question or the reality, how far reaching the behaviors of a company are and, and mm-hmm. it's not it's not really just that one person somewhere mm-hmm. who's doing a certain way it, it you know even that one person well that one person writes a job description that one right. person interviews uh all these different things and how that absolutely um just kind of kind of cast the dominoes but without a doubt I, yeah totally agree totally agree and what did it was somebody, I got to look, somebody who, who made that comment. It was kind of the other thing that I'm not going to repeat it properly here, but it was some of the effect of by not, by not holding someone in your organization accountable for, you know, performing or et cetera, mm-hmm. you're actually, um, 
you're actually denying them the opportunity yes. to grow, which is kind of an interesting way. All these things that we, when I say we, whatever, right, that, that we, <laughs> we, we just don't say anything about, or we allow to happen, or we, you know, it's someone else's responsibility to take care of it. All these things that by not uh, taking action, among the other things, we're also at some denying that, that other person the mm -hmm. opportunity to develop from it. Mm -hmm. I heard that a couple of times. I think one uh, person spoke about, uh, much like me, not asking for help. So just I'm going to keep doing it. I can do it. I can manage it all. I don't need help from others. I've got this, right? I'm independent. I'm strong. I, I got this. But there's people out there that want to help. So I'm not asking for help, not giving that person opportunity. Like you said, it's the same with accountability. I heard that on, I think, two or three of the speakers that I watched had a very similar theme that it isn't all about me, right? So asking for help, holding people accountable allows those around me then to help to be accountable and to focus on those to grow around me and, and foster that more healthy culture and environment. So that was a theme that I saw a couple different times where it's help or accountability, but it was the same intent. Absolutely. It is. I'm curious your thoughts, Angela, on this. One of, you know, one of the things that was a common thread when I kind of connect the dots on some of them is one, one of, you know, it, we could say trust, right? You know, it's a great word. It's so important in organization. <laughs> one of the things that that manifests itself in in let's say less than perfect organizations is how a, a leader or a manager because of their insecurity uh, doesn't allow kind of the people uh, around them to to grow right and feel that they'll kind of displace right. them and right. one of the common uh, themes was around hiring people to to complement your weaknesses yes, and, right. and people to, to to fill those gaps and and so it it speaks to such a different perspective mm -hmm. of, of how you you see the people around you i'm curious i mean what you know what have you experienced in that in your career is it do you find more times you're you're hired because you're 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 complimenting that other person or as it turns out it, no, it was probably because you they they seem less threatened, and then you know once you have the job, you do whatever. But it's right. how you get into it, right? You know, I think for me personally, I have had I think jobs that were that I have earned for both of those. Whether it was uh, I was hired um, reporting to a female, I think she was a COO and very strong, very almost aggressive. Uh, when I first met her, I really liked her. And I thought this is a great leader. And then started working with her. I'm like, oh, maybe a little bit fist on the table kind of person. And I and I think over time, I, I realized that I wasn't hired to compliment her. I was hired because I wasn't a threat. And I, I, I learned that. And then I've also learned that I had some experience where I had a fantastic male boss who hired me that I we had a, a slight history at one other company and he was another company and then I was hired for him and it was an absolute compliment we had a complimentary uh, dynamic and it was so positive and and that's what he told me he's like well I want to do these things because I do these things really well you're going to do those things because you do those things really well and it was that was probably my honestly my favorite boss of all time because of that relationship he did certain things so so well that i was trying to learn early on in my um executive leadership positions that i knew that i wasn't doing well like i wanted to do more i wanted to learn and that's what he just excelled in and then some of those things like the tactical execution and like just getting stuff done which what he often said you just get s done all the time i'm like that's me that's what i do and it was a really good you know compliment so that relationship that I think I worked with him for almost four years was probably my most favorite boss because of that relationship. So and those are the bosses, those leaders that um, really attracted me was to your point, looking for the the complementary uh, skills around him. And so that's how I lead. I, I don't know everything. And I, I come across very confident because I am. I am very confident and I'm confident and I have an ego and what I know that I can do well. And those areas that I don't know, I'm going to tell you I don't know, and I'm going to go find someone to help me be successful because it isn't about necessarily me being successful. It's about us being successful. And 
to watch people around you take pride in the success. That's what's fun. That's what that's what motivates and drives me as a leader. So you're, you're right on, Alan. And uh, I have had personally both opportunities to work for someone where I felt I was there just because I wasn't a threat to them and their job. And I was there for those to be an actual like partner, a team uh, getting to success. So those are my favorite. And that's how I tend to lead because that, that worked well for me. But I, it is not everywhere. And I think within larger organizations, you have all of those leaders and managers, unfortunately. So um, you had to kind of pick those out that are really looking for those to uh, foster that more complementary uh, environment. So, so what do you think if you if you find yourself in a job and and it becomes evident to you that that among other things, not that you don't have the skills or whatever, but among other things, <laughs> you were hired because the hiring person didn't see you as a threat do you do you temper your your moves or do you just yeah do your job and go for it and it is what it is i mean how do you, you know, what would you say to somebody like i'm for me personally i don't i didn't stay at that job very long because of that was the dynamic that also had the fist pounding gentleman at the table that that was the same company so you could tell that company was probably dysfunctional i probably made the wrong choice accepting that job at the time hindsight you know always 2020 uh, but but honestly it was a great learning experience right so you have to take some of those i don't know, unfortunate opportunities to learn right that's i'm going to take those like we talked about you know a few moments ago those leaders that i didn't like their leadership style or didn't like the environment, I know that's what I don't want. So now I know what I do want more of. So I left that job after I said four months because of m many of those things. It was obviously just on a, a healthy culture for me. And there might be some people that that's like right up their alley, like that's what I wanna do. But for me, that was not my culture. So I left. So I think you have to do that that self finding, like, can I tolerate this behavior? Can I tolerate this, this culture? What am I going to gain in the end? Is it is it a learning opportunity? Should I stick around and learn and watch and grow? Is it an industry that I want to learn more of that will catapult me to someplace else? So I think each situation is different. But I work obviously to you know to afford to live, but because I enjoy to work, I enjoy making a difference. Um, my LinkedIn profile says it might one of my things is, you know, make a difference every day, whether it's just smiling at someone holding the door for someone or delivering something on time, just a small difference every day, it goes a long way for me. So I work, and I choose the companies I work for in the, in the organizations I work in, that's going to be good for me. And if it's not, I'm probably not going to stick around. If there's a way for me to help influence the change, that's also a challenge for me too. Like, well, shoot, this isn't working, but I'm going to try to influence the change. And and a lot of times I'm at a leadership level that uh, affords me that opportunity. I have a, a bigger voice. So I try to, you know, influence that positive change. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to, is it something that you really enjoy doing? You're, you, you get paid to to live, but you have to enjoy to to live right so it's it's not just a paycheck <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you have to have true. it all well without a doubt i i firmly believe we, we spend too much of our life working to not enjoy what what we're doing and what we're spending our absolutely. time doing or where we're working yeah so, absolutely. Else I'm, I'm curious about if uh you want to share so a, a number of of words and themes that i heard from a number of people they uh I'm just gonna say they make sense to me, right? Accountability. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. make sense to me. I feel I know what they mean. I feel mm -hmm. I, I know what the person was saying and what they would do with it. One word, I'm not so sure I fully understand. And let me just be clear. I know exactly what this person was saying. Okay. So so I understood what they were saying, the context made it all clear. But in the abstract, the word was fairness. And mm. and when I think about that, I, like mm. like to me, when I think about trust with an organization, it's 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 bi-directional, it's straightforward. You know when 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 you have it, when you don't, you know, when you feel it. Something about fairness mm. leaves me with this feeling of is there is there oh is there the subtext fair to who or who right. right and 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 I don't know if that's just just me the what the word is to me or if that's something about the word i'm curious what it 
how it how you respond to that word and kind of in the abstract. Yeah, that's interesting. I I when you said it, it it struck me like you're right. That is a an interesting word to use in a, a working environment because, like you said, fair to whom, right? Like. Uh, fair to myself or to others because I can I can step on people <laughs> and get ahead and take all the glory for work the, the my team members around me or well, is it fair because I'm their leader and their their boss on paper and so it's my organization so it's fair but not it's not fair right they they did the work so it's 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 interesting that you say that uh, I haven't put a lot of thought into it but I agree that it is it is a interesting word in the work environment for sure and it does go a lot with with trust and uh, accountability as well. Um, I don't know. I'm going to think about that a little bit more. But I, you, I, it is interesting. It's got me thinking a little bit about it, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah, it, I just found it just very interesting. Like I said, the person's yeah. context was great. Uh, what what he he spoke about, but yeah. I think about it as more of a broad value. Right. What does it mean, right? An organization, right? We, we want to be fair. We want to treat people fair because I, I think there is that the level of subjectivity of absolutely. Know, who are you being fair to, or what is fair to the person making the rules, or right? <laughs> or, right. Or these, uh, right. Because <laughs> because if, if if we talk about trust, it's very easy to say, right? If if uh, you know, the, the kind of, you know, do as I say, not as I do, uh, you'd say, okay, right. well, that's not a trusting environment. So you can right. use whatever word you want, <laughs> but clearly <That's> right, <laughs> it's, it's bi-directional trust. Right. The other one, yeah. Much more yeah. confusing to me about, um, it seems like it's, it's less black and white than right and wrong, I but, agree. but maybe not because I think right and wrong is, is still so contextual of what, any given person believes is right or wrong. Uh, uh, you know, obviously we have laws yeah. that say what <laughs> what is. But, yeah. um, when it comes to like diversity and equity, I mean, you, you know, there's a, a federal program, WOTSI, the Work Unemployment Tax Credit, right, which encourages organizations to hire certain people within certain um, conditions, right? They uh, you work in a certain area or you're of a certain background or whatnot. So companies receive tax credits. For hiring those types of people, you can say that is not fair, right? They could, you could say, I am being discriminated against for not being hired for being in that part of that um, program, if you will. But it is leveling the field to some extent to get us better, diverse, and fair, because it is saying you're hiring the equal equal um, skills. You're not going to hire someone who's not qualified for the job, but you're going to hire that person who is <clears throat> qualified for that job of this particular background to get them an opportunity, which then gets the company the tax credit. But I, I worked in tax credits for a short bit, as you can probably tell. Um, so that came up and at first it's like, well, that doesn't seem fair. Like why why would I hire this person over that person? Take that out of the equation though. You just, you're gonna hire the most qualified person, but if that most qualified person is part of this program, you're gonna be incentivized as, a, as an employer. So like the word fair, it, it's, it's interesting in how you can look at it and it can be taken a couple different ways and that was just you know one example from our federal government in in a yeah. tax credit in a sense and, and i hope that if 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 he hears this I, I surely hope i did not offend the person who said it because <laughs> i know, i know he, he was being very pure in what what he was saying yeah. uh, it just, <laughs> it, when you think about right how you build positive cultures and organizations if it lacks the clarity, um, will you be able to realize your outcome? And you are uh, so right. And I think that's um, one of those that that I felt. Yeah, there's uh, context is incredibly important. It, it it has it has difficulty for me kind of standing on its own with, with the mm -hmm. clarity because mm -hmm. there is that like the exact example you gave. Well, it's fair to this person, but I'm sure the other person <laughs> doesn't think it's fair at all. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So, so I'm I'm reluctant to even interrupt. You two are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a very rich conversation. Actually, actually, I do have one question, if you will, yeah. and and because I think you've really honed in on this core question, and I I'll come back actually 
to a label, but but I want to I want to kind of get to the question. We're all on a on a journey, right? And it's a unique journey, right? Every one of us, every group, etc. And you've we've we've all called out struggles as you look at the right the videos and and we experience mm -hmm. each other. We call it these struggles, and there's some challenging topics, truly challenging topics. And, you know, do I mention the conference to a female or or a male, and how is it going to be interpreted exactly as as you mentioned? Are these very very challenging topics? Is it a threat? Did I get hired because someone sees me as someone that a, a not threat? Right? Is it fair? These are all very challenging topics. My question to both of you is, as the leaders I respect tremendously and the world can gain from your wisdom, how do we respectfully put those challenging topics on the table and deal with them? Any guidance, wisdom that you have to offer? Mm. And, and actually, and the label that we've been using for the conference is it's an ecosystem of inquiry. So put the challenges and let's inquire, let's explore. So respectfully. Okay. Uh, very, very interested in your perspectives. I think this opportunity right now is a way to to help, right? Me being here sharing my thoughts is one more voice out there now that, that is being heard. And I have shared my prior video with a couple of folks, you know, their friends or some former colleagues or is now on my, my LinkedIn profile. So getting the word out there and talking about it um, and being open to talk about it and being almost vulnerable to some extent to talk about it and having the conversations, it, it's going to take um, more conversations. This is not a new topic. It is a topic that's been around for a number of years. There are a number of wonderful uh, communities and, and forums and things, you know, touching the topic. But by Alan, forwarding that invitation out on LinkedIn on his profile just again heightened the awareness how many people saw that and paused for just a moment and thought my goodness there probably is still something that I can do as a person to to make this better he included some women and men on his um, notes like for, uh, specifically tag them uh, not to say you need to do something about this but hey I trust you to listen and be open to this conversation and it's going to then carry forward. So um, I think the way that we can continue to improve the difficult conversations is to keep having them, right? We can't just ignore it, and, and I, which I think maybe at times I might, I, I might just wanna be like, ignorance is bliss, like it's all fine. I was hired for my qualities and I'm gonna keep growing for that. I, mean, I don't know, <laughs> you know there's, there's still an underlying theme of problems that have to get solved. So. Um, my suggestion or my my thought is is a constant conversation and not to be afraid to have the conversation and to share it and like Alan was was so um, I don't know just brave and courageous and just to share this and get it out there and say there's a there's a problem here there's this wonderful uh, conference going on that you all need to be aware of and that then prompted several more conversations I saw it I shared it I spoke I've shared it so it's just it's that uh, keep sharing, keep talking. Yeah, you know, I'd have to say on, on one level, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am uh, similar to what you said, Asia. I am not a fan of difficult conversations. I, I don't, I mean, there are people who, who you know, they, they get their energy, right? From <laughs> difficult conversations. I'm not one of them. Um, and, 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 and to be very honest, I don't appreciate people telling me how I should feel about something. Um, but but I do find myself to be fairly curious and and, and, uh, and inquisitive. And so for me, it's, it's not so much about promoting difficult conversations or, or, or telling people how they should feel about certain mm -hmm. situations, but just mm -hmm. being interested in, in others' lives yeah. and wanting yeah. to learn about where they're from and, and what have been their experiences in lives. And, and, and I almost said struggles. It's not about what have been your struggles. What have you been your life experiences? Maybe it was right. trying, maybe it wasn't. And, and by doing that, you just become a little more informed and a little more aware. Right. Um, and, and I, I think for me, I, you know, is that, is that enough? I, you know, I don't know. I, I, 
I am surely it's surely not enough for some people. Um, and it's <laughs> probably more than, than enough for others. Um, but for me, I mean, I, I enjoy learning about other people and, and hearing their stories. And, and I think for me, that, that does a lot more in my world and, and the people I work with to, to help them find a better path than mm-hmm. to tell them, right, you need to do this mm-hmm. or that or believe this or that. Um, you know, mm-hmm. they, you, you help people find their own path. And their own right. place. It's an interested curiosity. I think Alan, you said curiosity, and I'll add interested to it. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Which well, is well, which is really just like which you know it's. I, I mean, some people you know whatever they're they're incredibly well read and they travel the world and they just seem to know everything about everything, which is you know always <laughs> amazing people that you come across. Uh, but but others, you know, we, we live where we live. We know what we know. And, and at least, you know, where I work today as, as a global company, I always find it just rather fascinating, just all the different things that, that are going on. If you, if you just kind of scratch through the surface and you find out that, that you know, this person over here's family, you know, owns a, a coffee plantation or whatever country. And, and this person over here grew up on a dairy farm and this, you know, and, and you just <laughs> these things that you'd never have any idea or yeah, any clue yeah. just you know at work and just having a a work conversation but if That's you right. if you open that door a little bit um it's it's amazing the, the things that you just you learn about about people That's right. that shapes your shapes your world then uh, once you once you know it words 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 of wisdom from from both of you creating the opportunity right the invitation being curious, right? Pausing as as you have these interactions, uh, expressing that openness and, and a degree of vulnerability. Those are extremely, extremely powerful. And really in, in the end, right? We're all trying to one form or another become better, our better version of ourselves. Yeah. Absolutely. And, I'm, I'm, remind, I'm reminded, I'm, I'm quickly reminded of uh, Tolstoy's uh, uh, quote, if you if you will, you know, we can only know that we know nothing, and that's the highest degree of human wisdom. In that, being curious, being creative together, so we can get to a better place. Absolutely, love it, love it. So, so I'm going to be very forward in saying, you know, you both have to come back because this is too <laughs> good in one form or another. And and there's a part of me that says we got to take the show on the road. So I mean, any way you look at it. So, but, but I, I, likewise, I want to I want to respect both of your time. Any any closing thoughts, if you will, or, or anything at all uh, from both of you? I appreciate the opportunity. I, I really do, and this has been a, a again a very humbling moment. And I appreciate both of you and respect both of your opinions and your comments very much. So, just thank you for giving me the opportunity and for reminding me to continue to use my voice. Most welcome. And, and hopefully I'm not being drowned out at this point. I, I definitely, in my ear, I am um, from what I hear outside. Uh, but yeah, thank you for the opportunity as well, Cy. This has been great. Uh, Angela, thank you for, uh, for the time and, and sharing. A uh, wonderful experience and uh, looking for even more great wisdom um, in two days. There you Sounds go. good. Yes. Th- th- thank th- you. Thank you both so much and, and by all means, Anytime you need a gentle, respectfully, a gentle reminder to use your voice, I'm always there. And we're all there for each other. Thank you so much. Thank you, folks, so much. And with Alan and Angela and the tremendous wisdom that they've shared, we look forward to folks joining on May 13th. And as I said, I'm definitively going to find opportunities to uh, pull these fine folks back together (laughs) again for more great conversation. So thank you. I look forward to it. Sounds great. (laughs) Take good care. Take care. Thank you.